Everybody loves running backs. Whether you're a fantasy guy, you just like watching the game of football, man. Running back's just a fun position. So we're going to be going over my top 15 in the 2022 NFL Draft class. Because to hell with the top 10. I'm going to give you 15. But what's crack a lacking? It's your boy, Baroshmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. And as always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. That's to have that nice, beautiful football discourse, uh, baby, as well. No highlights. I know it's kind of a bummer because this is the position you kind of want to see highlights on. But I always get hit with a copyright claim. I'm not doing it. Maybe I figure out how to do it next year. It is what it is. Sorry, guys. I got to make that got to make that paper. But let's go ahead. Get into it. Starting it at number 15. Isaiah Spiller out of Texas A&M. I know a lot of people have this guy either as a top five back or a top 10 back. I'm sorry. I'm just not high on this cat. There's not really any one. There, this, he just doesn't have a high end trait, man. He's got a complete NFL skill set, I'd say. But there's nothing that really, I think, separates him from a bulk of these guys. He's a pretty powerful runner, good lower body uh, strength, and displays light feet, like lighter feet than you expect at 217 pounds like he gets that second level he's got a little shimmy he's got a little shake uh honestly it'd be nice if he could run a bit lower as a running back and lay down that shoulder but he cut weight earlier this year right to have a bit more of that shimmy and i think it cost him because getting to the second level it it didn't really it, it didn't happen as much as well 2020 he, he he got too fancy. He got too fancy and really didn't break off a ton of big runs. Like he doesn't, I don't think he has, well, obviously he doesn't have breakaway speed, 4-6-3. Like he, he only broke off eight carries in 2020. What, only eight carries of his 188 were 20 plus yards. And that was about the same this season. Um, I mean... If you want to look at a plus, drops and fumbles aren't 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 really a thing when it comes to Isaiah Spiller. But like I said, man, he like I think he can do the, your basic running back things in the passing game. But there's not like one aspect of his game that really draws me to Spiller, and that's why I got him here at 15. He's at 181 on my big board. He's gonna go higher than this. People are gonna be higher on him than I am. I'm that's just the thing but i just think there's some better guys i just it's just it's just how i feel man i can't help it it's how i feel f14 i got zonovan knight bam knight out of nc state i'm a big fan of this cat uh, i got him one spot higher than spiller so who both are young guys and uh <laughs> you could all also say they're very similar prospects to some degree but the thing with with bam i'm gonna call you bam can i call you bam i'm gonna call you bam you ran primarily in a inside zone blocking scheme there at nc state but he shows shiftiness and I, he shows patience but this dude can pop he's got pop he can pop it to the outside for big gains i put here that he's has good vision i don't think his vision's a problem i think it's i guess a decision making thing like he could he could be indecisive and inconsistent with um some of the some of the holes he decides to go through as a runner one of my favorite qualities about him like straight up i love that this dude never stops churning his feet that's a water painting thing man never stop moving your feet i'm a suck uh, that's my favorite one of my favorite players of all time water painting but this dude never stops moving the feet but I think he could definitely get a bit stronger in the lower body area. And also, again, you're going to see this come up quite a bit. Lower the pad level. Lay the boom on contact. Your name's Bam. Lower the shoulder, dude. Bam right through those guys, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, he only eclipsed 20 carries once in his career. So that might be a bit alarming. I mean, I don't think he's a bell cow guy. So is what it is runs the basic running back route route tree if you don't know what that means swings and screens swings and screens it's what it is um drops uh he cleaned up a bit of his drops 
his freshman season. That was kind of a concern. But fumbles have been a bit of a concern because over like he has over 400 carries and seven fumbles. That's kind of a, an alarming rate, something you should definitely take into account when it comes to uh, Bam Knight. But definitely one of my favorite guys in this class. By the way, if you don't know, now you know. I am a guy that doesn't really hold the... I, I, I don't value the running back position as most other people do. So you're going to see these guys a bit lower than probably you would on other people's big boards. That's I can't help it. That's just who I am. I just got done ranting about Spiller. It's who I am, man. At 13, I got Tyler Beatty. Adam Mizzou. Oh, man, I wish his name was Tyler Batty because he's a batty of a scat back in this class. He's small, but I think he's got good quicks, good speed. He's shifty in space. Hard to put a hand on. This past season, he had 57 forced missed tackles on 271 carries. Ended up eclipsing 1,600 yards, 14 touchdowns. Not too bad. He wasn't asked to run a variety of routes there at Mizzou as his average attempt of the target was behind the line of scrimmage. But he's a guy that is, quite frankly, I think capable of doing that. He does well running through arm tackles. But I think when it comes to guys that uh, get a bit cleaner, contact on him that actually square up and take make the tackle like he, he goes down fairly easy in that regard now like if, if for example if you were to look at better defenses in the sec uh he was basically a non-factor in the run game against a m and against georgia so there's that uh he's a scat back through and through in terms of what his role would be in the NFL, the guy's just too small to be a scat back or too small to be a bell cow, in my opinion. Uh, and I think he just passed that athletic threshold to kind of be, well, again, a scat back. This guy you 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 want out in space. The dude is the dude's nice. He's got good, he's got good shake, good shimmy. So yeah, I'm I'm a fan of Beatty. Nah, screw it. I'm a fan of Batty. At number 12, I got Devontae Price out of Florida International. This was a guy I was a bit slow to. Uh, I would say slower than majority of people. Because, um, quite frankly, he never handled a large workload there at Florida International. I didn't really get to him until the Senior Bowl, where I was like, man, this guy looks like a receiver. <laughs> I, it feels like he's going to be a receiver in the NFL. I really uh, I really thought that when I first saw him. And you know what? Like going back to this tape, he, he's kind of fun to watch, man. He shows pretty good patience and vision. He's fairly very athletic uh, for his size. And like his contact balance is kind of interesting because this dude could get knocked, knocked around. But... Like, I think, what did I put? Like, he eats contact like he's on a tightrope. Like, th this dude can maintain balance. Now, again, uh, he's got the kind of contact balance you prefer in the open field rather than, you know, in tight spaces because when he's going to get swarmed, uh, enough, uh, good luck good luck balancing on a tightrope when you got, like, four guys around you. It ain't going to work out. But, again, that's his game. It is him out in space. That's going to be his role in the NFL. I think it's going to be kind of this scat back role. I put as a weakness, solid in pass protection. Like he has the traits to be good, to be much better. And he, for the most part, like he just wasn't used a lot in that regard at Florida International. But I think he he definitely he definitely has the build. Uh, to be actually pretty pretty darn good in that regard. He's got a ton of special team experience. And see, the big hiccup, this this guy just wasn't used a lot in the passing game there at Florida International. So this is a lot of stuff that he's going to have to learn when on an NFL roster. But this dude could change gears fast. He's quick. He's got good vision. Like I think there's a role for this cat in the NFL. If not as a like a, a guy that you want to include in your running back committee as a return man because i think the return skills are just Mwah! at 11 i got kyron williams out of notre dame listen i've never been that high on this cat 
a lot of you, you either love them or you love them. I don't. I think I'm kind of in the minority here when it comes to Kyron Williams. I think a lot of people really like him. I think at five nine, man, he's got to get over that 200 pound mark. There's not a lot of power to his game, and for us, for a guy that's gonna be used in the passing game, like he's smaller than you you would like and less athletic than you would like, like. He ended up running a four, uh, what a four five four, for his forty after running in the four sixes at the combine, but I don't know. You just expect a better athlete. The vert wasn't impressive, uh, and he even watch it like the dude's got a huge receiving upside. Like he might be the best pass blocker in this class. He he was used a lot in the passing game. Like he took twenty two snaps this past season, out of the slot. He reminds me a little bit of Demetric Felton, but less heavy, which isn't a good thing. Felton, I think Felton, he ended up falling to like fifth or the sixth round. But where he makes up for it in, with his lack of like high end speed is, I would say, his phone booth type of athleticism. Like this guy can cut on a dime. Like, look, just look at the three cone sub seven second. Like, he can cut on a dime, and he actually gets up to his top speed fairly quickly. There were a lot of times there in, uh, last season in Notre Dame, especially when uh, he went on this hot streak at the end of the year, where he got to top speed so quick, just hit the gears, and it was gone. Good luck catching him. So there is that. He had five fumbles last season, which is concerning, which is why I just put passing game back. Like, I don't know how you use this guy a lot as a actual running back. Um, the 10% drop rate was a bit concerning. And also performances against good, great competition significantly dropped off off like he only av- he averaged less than three yards after contact and less than two forced missed tackles against teams like Pittsburgh, Alabama, uh Clemson, who he faced twice. Oh now I talked about him hitting this hot streak and it happened against North Carolina where or what no not North Carolina USC where Suddenly he just broke out, and suddenly he was he was averaging clean, cl- close to five yards after contact, after struggling to get above three in the first six games. The fumbles, concern thing. I don't see you using this guy in the run game uh, m- much at all. Um, again, the sh- he's not really a sh- a shake type of type of guy. He's a cut and go, trying to get to his top. Uh, Top speed fairly high. Does deliver a mean stiff arm. That's a good thing about him. But yeah, I mean, I'm just not in love with him. Just not in love with him like everyone else is. At 10, I have Zamir White out of Georgia. He's a guy that I really just really haven't been high on. I don't question what he can do as an athlete. He's just not dynamic. Hardly ever used in the passing game, which to be fair, like Georgia has a deep group of running backs. Um, if you weren't, if you're not new to the channel, you know I was absolutely in love with Kenny McIntosh. Still am. Hoping for good things next year, Mr. Kenny. But he was hardly ever used in the passing game, and he's just not a very dynamic runner. There's not a lot of creativity to his running style. Uh, as a former five-star recruit, and. Like in all honesty, like I like what he can do physically, and if he gets daylight, he can go. He really can. But even like the contact balance isn't phenomenal, I would say. Like uh, his change of directions, middle in. Um, there are times like like after the initial burst, if he sees a hole and goes, like he can get to that second level fairly quickly, but. I don't know. I'm again. I'm just not in love. He's a one cup, one cut guy. He's not dynamic. That's just who he is. He's got good play strength. He could eat through contact, but man, if it again, if it involves him trying to shake a guy, that's just not him. That's not who he's gonna be. I think ideally, he's a there's there's a role for him in the NFL. He has a skill set 
uh, a body type um, and an athletic profile that leads to good success in the NFL. And by good success, I mean being a part of a committee and having a role. That's just who he is. That's why he sits here at 10. I got him at 127 on my big board. I'm not a guy that I've never been in love with, but I, I don't mind having him in my friend zone. <laughs> at 9, I have Rashad White out of ASU, man. This cat looked really good in 2020 in the lone four games that he had with like he this dude just a, was a menace in space the two fumbles were a bit concerning but then he came out 2021 had a hell of a year he really did and he cleaned up that fumbling problem which was huge he moves real smooth um he he was one of the scariest backs in open space he had 40 receptions last year for 425 yards um Almost had a thousand yards rushing, had fourteen touchdowns, fourteen or fifteen, I can't remember. But he he has the ability and the creativity in space to really be probably the best in this class. I'd like to see him work more on special teams as well, because again, he has that type of ability. Uh, I was shocked he didn't run faster, but kind of is what it is. He is the type of guy you want on on tosses and stretch plays, because. Man, once he gets, once he finds daylight, watch out. He could be off to the races. He has a legit, he's a legit home run threat. Now, at the Senior Bowl, did notice not the most crispy route runner. So, might be a, might be this, might be a dude that's more so the screen type of back. Or obviously, it's something he could work on. Um, he's a bit, his vision could use a little bit, a little bit of polish. He, you could tell. At the Senior Bowl, he was a bit inconsistent with where, uh, where he should, where, where, sh where he should go, and when to break on certain holes. So like, needs a lot of polish in his game, but he's got legit playmaking ability to be something special in the NFL. Legit, like, I mean, dude, six foot two fifteen. You just don't expect guys like like this to built like this to be like that out in space so yeah man watch out for white man he i think he is he's a guy that's probably going early day three probably going fourth round man no lie yeah no nah, no nah, nah. I, I was about to say i might be willing to take him at the end of the third nah i ain't there i ain't there early early fourth though i'm taking this cat at number eight, Brian Robinson out of Alabama, the premier short yardage back, power back, goal line back of this class. Largely was a backup for the last four seasons, being stuck by guys such as Najee Harris. But this year, man, this was the year he finally eclipsed 500 yards rushing, and he cleared it with ease, getting over 1,300 yards. He was sixth in the nation. And force missed tackles. Real, really not a surprise because this guy's built like a boulder, man. His running style is violence, and it's just physical, man. It's physicality. That's what he does, man. He's got a mean, um, stiff arm. He's working with low mileage heading into the year. He only, or I think he's only actually had just under. 600 uh carries throughout his career so there's a lot of tread on those tires you like that yeah i mean some of his best work was just putting guys on the ground man just ah, get down there very north south runner very decisive because i mean he knows his weaknesses he's no he knows he's not a guy that can really wait there in the backfield you know, so if he has to make his own hole, he will. No real speed or actually a four five three. It's a lot faster than I expected, but you don't really see it on tape. Uh, the receiving upside is little to none. Um, not going to be a home run threat. His biggest run of the year came, or of his career came against New Mexico State. It was a sixty three yarder, but before that, his longest run was thirty seven yards. So, not going to be a home run guy. Uh, but uh, pass protection, there's something there. There's something there. 
I think if he's willing to like he he wants to lay the hit, but if, if he's willing to stick with it, because that was something um him and Chan and Tindall, they went head to head in pass protection drills at the senior bowl, and he laid a monstrous hit in on, on Tindall. But if he just stuck with it, man, he won't have lost the rep. That's something he needs to get better at, but there's something there, man. I really do. I really think uh, he I really think he, he come out and be a solid pass protector if you need him to be. But again, power back through and through, probably the premier guy in this class if that's what you're looking for. And number seven is my guy. I freaking love Jerome Ford. Good luck finding someone as high on him as I am in the draft community. Good luck. I freaking love Jerome Ford. I know the comp sounds ridiculous. But honestly, they have very similar running styles. Again, these aren't verbatim comps. But he was a transfer from Alabama. Got stuck in there. Brian Robinson, he decided to stick it out. Jerome Ford was like, I want to play. Went to Cincinnati in 2019. I love this dude's patience and his vision. Uh, and this was behind a very bad offensive line for Cincinnati. And this dude's just light on his feet, man. His jump cuts are beautiful and he accelerates through the whole holy moly like this cat broke off so many long runs i think he had maybe maybe like five or six runs that went for over 60 yards last year unlike and that's unlike most power backs you're not going to find that uh he ended up getting a little banged up but ended up returning didn't return with the same type of juice though uh what week was that specifically? Uh, I didn't put it here, but he did get banged up sometime during the year. Uh, and just didn't return with the same type of juice uh, and wasn't the same force miss tackler as he was beforehand. But the dude bursts well. Um, he shrugs off contact relatively well, but you might be a bit concerned as the season went on that... He didn't have that same type of juice by the end of the year. But I thought he played pretty well versus Alabama. It's just they got behind so quickly in that game that they banded the run game. Fumbles were a big concern heading into this season as he had three in 2020, which was a shortened year. But this year, this year, only one fumble on 161 carries. So... It is something that was an issue in the past. Didn't look like an issue this year. Something you need to consider. He's got NF. He's got NFL ready athleticism. Uh, good size. Is he ready to take the workload? I don't know. I don't think so. But I like this dude's patience. I like his vision. He's one of my favorite guys in this class. At number six. I have Tyler Algier out of BYU. He's got a very cool story. He was a walk-on at BYU after only receiving one D2 offer during his recruitment. He played a little bit at linebacker, I believe, for BYU before they were like, you know what, you're a running back. He's got tons of special team experience. That's going to be very alluring to, um, to NFL teams. He's a fairly solid pass protector, but he was – legit probably the best weapon for BYU uh over the last two seasons he had almost 400 yard car uh, 400 carries went for over 2500 yards 33 touchdowns 11 or 111 force missed tackles during that time he was just good he's a very strong downhill runner he's got legit home run potential as he showed off um Good patience, good vision, but he's a one-cut-and-go type of guy. There's not a lot of creativity in his running style. Uh, if there's a guy in front of him, he will sooner lower the shoulder than try to make any attempt at really trying to, like, shake this guy. He's like, nah, 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 I, I see you. I'm going to hit you. Uh, that's the type of guy he is. He's a no-nonsense type of runner, loves contact. Fumbles were an issue throughout his whole career, though. As da, 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 Let's see how I have it down here. I don't have it specifically, the number of fumbles he had, but uh, I know they were, a fish, uh, they were an issue this past season. Uh, basic running back route tree, and I don't think you're going to use them more than 
that. I think he's swinging in screens. Like his average depth of target was behind the line of scrimmage. But again, not really an East West Coast guy. Anyway, uh, he he really might be a one trick pony, like in terms of what he does. Like no nonsense. Go get get tough yardage for us. If you break it, holy crap! Watch out. He might be off to the races. Big fan of this cat. Now on to the top five, starting with James Cook out of Georgia. If you didn't know, now you know. Dalvin Cook's younger brother. This was his first year with more than 50 carries in a season. He ended up getting 82. No, it was 113. Uh, but first year with that type of workload. And how'd it go? It went pretty well, man. Cook is a guy that gets to top speed super easy. He accelerates so fast he's smooth he's a fluent athlete he never gets too bouncy in the backfield is which what, what i like about him uh sometimes you'll you'll see guys which it, it was kind of a cam Akers problem a couple of years ago where he would just get too bouncy in the backfield and I, I, he had a lot of especially for that florida state team at the time was dog water he had a lot of game well carries for loss it, that, that's not Cook, though. Cook's like forward, forward, forward. I'm not going to overstay my welcome back here. He's a very decisive runner in that regard. Uh, very much straight line, though. There isn't a lot of creativity to what he does. He just tries to run past people. He's like, hey, I'm very fast. I'm going to try to take advantage of that. And I'm just going to try to fly by you. Fortunately, the thing is with his contact balance is... I think a defender could breathe on him and he would go down to the ground. That's the type of contact balance we're talking about. Uh, as a receiver, he was one, he's probably one of the premier receiving backs in this class. He has 57 career receptions going for 13 forced missed tackles. He's got, he actually runs uh, probably one of the more complete route trees of any of the run backs in this class. And he does a good job. He displays very soft hands. He's a very good route runner in that regard. But, yeah, he's never going to be a guy that will be the bell cow. That's not his game. 5'11", 199. It shouldn't be his game. But, yeah, no, I'm a big fan of Cook. At four, I got Pierre Strong out of South Dakota State. A guy that's been this, like, slowly creeping up my big board. Now he's as high as 91. Absolutely ridiculous. He's a very powerful back that just dominated D2 football the last four years. Has had almost 600 carries, went for over 4,200 yards, 37 touchdowns, and 151 force missed tackles. Cleaner tacklers kind of, at times got the best of him, but the dude does have a little shiftiness, a little shimmy to his game. I love that word shimmy, and I'm going to be using it a lot when talking about running backs. Uh, but if he has open space, like, like watch out, like, at the uh was it the shrine bowl he took a screenplay like 63 yards just took little shake gone and we saw that speed 437 like low key this guy flies i didn't expect him to i expected him to be like four five comes out and does a sub four four and i'm like hello but you love this dude's patience he's got great vision behind the line of scrimmage and you know what? I think initially I wasn't wowed by. It. I was like, I don't think this guy's much of a home run threat. And I'm gonna I'm gonna retract that. I think he can be a home run threat. I think in a class where there's not a lot of guys you could really list as a bell cow, he's kind of that guy. I think he can be that guy. He runs the basic run about running back route tree. But if you're gonna take it 63 yards, I really don't care. Huge fan, like. He runs low. We talked about so much in this video about guys that run high. He runs low. If he wants to lay the boom, he'll lay the boom like he's Adam Cole, baby. And then at number three, I got Damian Pierce out of Florida. Another cat I really like. He's not, I don't think he's ever going to be the bell cow. Never was at Florida. But by gosh, man, this guy's got a very interesting skill set. First off, I love the center of gravity. He's got a low center of gravity. I think he's closer to 5'10 than he is 5'9, but he's just under 5'10. Almost at that 220. Particularly powerful, 21 bench, rep, uh, bench reps. 
225. By the way, at the combine, I loved it, dude. Because, like, I think only a handful, like, maybe, like, three guys did the bench press for uh, the running back. The running backs. Because typically a lot of guys were opting out of the bench press, choosing to do it on their pro day. Uh, just because it takes a lot out of you. And then you got to go ahead and do the rest of the drills. And the worst part is, man, for the runbacks, they didn't even get to the three cones or the short shuttles. They took so long doing the vert and the broad jump. So he didn't really get to display that. But during the bench, he's oh, he's struggling to pump out those last few. Gets uh, 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 The spotter goes. He go, He's like, I got you, Damien. I got you. To which Mr. Pierce replies, don't touch that B word. Hell, man. That's a my guy right there. I love that. Anyway, he was a very good receiving back the last two years. 35 receptions. Ended up going for close to 400 yards. Four tackles. The number that really stood out to me was 18 force miss tackles on 35 receptions. That's beautiful. He had 18. Um, oh, wow. He also, five of his 18 catches this year, actually, uh, came on routes that went 10 plus yards or more so he's a guy that gives you a bit more of a dynamic route tree than your standard running back just displays very good body control adjusts well to the ball in air however the ball skills are a bit questionable he doesn't have the james cook soft hands there was a wheel route he took that he burnt the defender turned to it and Went for the bucket catch instead of like going going up and trying to high point the football and it bounced right off his chest. So, hey, he's a running back for a reason. Uh, the ball skills might not be top tier, but hey, man, is what it is. He runs low. He's willing to lay the shoulder, lay the boom. I like that. He's one of the better pass protectors in this class on top of that. Uh, he does good shoving off contact, but he's pretty pretty much a no-nonsense type of guy. He likes to cut and go. Thing is, when it comes to his contact balance, because like he handles contact well, it's when he cuts and goes, there there were times where he would slip on the cut. So, uh, again, you're down in the swamp. The soil, it's a bit moist. So, Maybe, maybe that, maybe that, there's a reason there. Maybe, maybe. Doesn't have breakaway speed. Not going to be a home run guy, but if he's very explosive, though, one play on the foot, you're going to love this guy in the red zone. Like, if you're looking for a guy that fits a role that's like, hey, in the red zone, or hey, be our passing, ba uh, passing back on third down, that's kind of what you want him to do, but he's also a guy that could get his hands dirty. I like that. Big fan of Pierce. And then two, I got Brees Hall. And to be fair, this is more 1A, 1B. Whether you have him or Kenneth Walker as your number one, I don't think it really matters. They're actually going to be ranked one after the other on my big board. I got him, uh, Brees Hall at 55. I do have Kenneth Walker at 54. I I think either are fine in to me. Uh, he was fourth last season in force missed tackles. He had 70, and he shows a very sturdy base, very good, um, very good contact balance. Uh, and I mean, he was hit a lot behind the line of scrimmage. Iowa State's run blocking was atrocious. Now, I don't think a lot of people talk too much about his burst, his explosiveness. I think for a back his size, it's better than you would anticipate. It's not great, but I think it's good. I do. I really do. That long field speed, never really got a chance to see it there at Iowa State. Again, this is a guy that was often hit behind the line of scrimmage before he even got a chance to get going. Uh, runs the basic running back route tree, swings and screens, but he's also a guy that once he has the ball in his hands out in space, he's very hard to like bring down. Like you saw that in the receiving game for Iowa State quite a bit, where it was just like he got the ball, ball the he got the ball quick, and it was just a nightmare dealing with. I think he has a a skill set, uh, a build, a body type, an athletic profile that just leads to success in the NFL. That's why he is my number two or one B, if you will. And then at 1A, I got Kenneth 
Freaking Walker, the breakout guy this past season, led all of college football in force missed tackles, ran a lot of Russian uh, NFL Russian concepts there at Michigan State, former transfer from Wake Forest. But, man, this guy is, while I wouldn't say he's got, like his speed's way better, way more, way, way better than you would expect. I think he ended up getting a four, four, forty, four, three, eight. Excuse me, forty. He just has this nice little combination of speed, power, and elusiveness. Like he's a bit of explosive as well. And I mean, it, it, it put on some of the best tape of anybody in this class. That combination, I think, will be deadly at the next level. Um, when you lead college football and force missed tackles, it's like, hey, something to this guy. You got to watch him. Javante Williams was that guy last year. Uh, and I actually, I see a lot of Javante in uh, Walker, even though my comp is D'Angelo Williams. Couldn't really come up with a good comp for Walker. Uh, so I just went with Mike Renner as I was like, okay, that, that's about right. I was looking at other guys, um, but none of them I really liked by comparison. Uh, this dude handled a hell of a workload at Michigan State. So I think he could, he's, he, he's going to handle volume very well in the NFL. My biggest question is never really used in the passing game. He's just a total question mark. What can he do in the passing game? Well, we don't know. We really didn't get to see that there at Michigan State. So uh, how is he as a pass pass protector? I don't know. How is he as a pass catcher? Didn't see a lot of it. Just didn't see it. So he is a big question mark in that regard. But again, when you lead college football and force missed tackles, when you have his combination of speed, explosiveness, elusiveness, and power, it just leads and translates to success in the NFL. That is why he is my number one. But let me know where some backs you think got gypped. There's a couple of backs that I really like that just miss the list, like uh, what Tyron Davis Price out of LSU, uh, just Sean Corbin out of Florida State. I'm a huge fan of. He's probably going to make one of my um, sleepers lists if he hasn't already. I have to go back and check that. Can't wait till the sleeper, uh, other sleeper videos come out. But that's it for the video. Go ahead, do the YouTube thing. And as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.